Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Women's Fittest. This is an episode of Chick Chat that I wanted to do a quick introduction for. Um, I am super sick right now, but uh, I was actually starting to get sick when Kira and I did the podcast, recorded it on Sunday, but I wanted to put a little disclaimer. I wanted to apologize because the sound quality is really bad, uh, especially at the beginning. I think it gets better later and I Unfortunately, that's like such a huge deal when you're doing a podcast, because if people don't, if they can't hear clearly what is going on, or maybe while they're doing other things, a lot of times they turn it off. So I just wanted you to know that this is kind of a fluke and we're going to work on making sure that there's not background noise that will pull from the voices that are trying to talk. But I think that Kira and I did have uh, some good conversation. We were talking about our journeys with hormone replacement therapy and um, a couple other topics that uh, off the top of my head, I'm uh, not hundred <laughs> percent I'm sure kind of cloudy with um, everything that we talked about, but it was a fun conversation. And um, we did talk about some fun things as well. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you stick it out. If it is difficult for you to listen to, like I had debated on putting it up on the podcast platform and thinking that maybe I would just put it on YouTube because it's easier to listen to something when you can see people talking. So if you're having trouble listening and you want to be able to hear the conversation, maybe knowing about what we're going Going to do or what we're doing with hormone replacement therapy after, um, you know, Kira's after competing, me going through perimenopause. And if that's a conversation that you want to make sure that you get all the details of, we will, um, you know, then I was going to say, then watch, you know, go ahead and watch it on YouTube. It's a lot easier to follow there. But we will continue to talk about this. Um, I have some things coming up in the next couple of weeks that I'm going to be pursuing this and I'll continue to talk about it. So if you miss it this time, I'll kind of recap and we'll talk about it again in future episodes. But again, I just wanted to apologize because the sound quality is not, is not favorable and I did notice that it got a little bit better later on, but if you struggle, I know, unfortunately, you'll probably turn it off and, um, you know, just stick around for the next one. But I, as always, we appreciate your support so much. We appreciate your reviews and all the things that you do. And just know that this is just a little bit of a, you know, in, in the whole mix of everything. And I think we're all going to be back next week. And we're going to talk about beginners with competition prep and because the season is opening up and uh, cover that topic again. And, um, you know, as a more beginner based platform and covering a lot of like your questions and things like that. So um, stay tuned. We always have good stuff. And um, I hope that you stick it out with this one and enjoy it and give us a little bit of grace. <laughs> I appreciate that. So anyways, without further ado, here's me and Kira having a, a good old Sunday afternoon chick chat. So I had one more thing that I wanted to add that uh, I struggled to, I couldn't find my lab results in the paperwork when we were talking on the podcast and I was able to find that um, on the computer now and I just wanted to clarify. So preemptively to let you know, I did do my my lab tests and I'm actually gonna have more blood work, uh, like I'm doing them again a month later with another company just to recheck, but my testosterone was less than three and estradiol was at 49 and progesterone was at one or, um, I'm trying to think here. Um, point one, it's point one. No, <laughs> one, it's point one. So, um, yeah, so things are basically, it looks like a uh, blood work of a postmenopausal woman 
And um, that is disheartening. But just so you have that information, I had tried to find it. There's probably a little bit of an awkward silence while I'm looking. And then Kira gave me some shit about that because I was trying to find my blood work. But um, that's what um, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, as a, according to my last blood test. So anyways, now you have the information, enjoy the podcast, uh, do your best to listen and um, we'll update you soon and see you next time. Oh, here we go. Got it. Woo-hoo! Here we are. It's a chick chat. It's me and Kira. Just the two of us. Oh, and Chi Chi. It's my crotch. That was a bad and shot. Here's knees. <laughs> my my knees. Just gonna pull a basic instinct on us right now. <laughs> this is this is um this is the start of OnlyFans. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I uh I'm sick, but I'm like, no, I'm powering through this, baby. Oh, yeah. You were sick. I'm a baby, though, but I'm a big baby when I'm sick. Not always, but sometimes. Like, yeah. Sometimes I just don't, yeah. Why are you sick? What happened? Wait, there's a bunch of background. On my end? Let me turn the fan off. Maybe it's a fan. Your only fan. Well, here is uh, uh, fixing uh, her sound. Hey, everybody. Is that better? Welcome. Yes. Welcome back to another episode of the Women's Fittest. Me and Kira, and we're going to talk some shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> but um and if you don't like it here's your disclaimer go away that's what yeah. talking about serious stuff I, that i want to talk about but um so i quickly long story short i've been having some issues with my shoulder and i went and talked to my doctor and they decided she decided that she was going to put me on a course of like a metro dose of prednisone to just try and calm it down yeah. first yeah and i freaking hate it but i said okay we'll give it a shot and then i'm going to go to um physical therapy and then if i need to i'll see about getting any i've had a cortisone shot in my biceps tendon on my left side before because i get tendonitis sometimes mm -hmm. Anyways, we just had a course of, we're going to try these steps before I decide if I actually want to do an MRI, because obviously the goal is to always avoid surgery. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So I, what did, go ahead. But I, I know I need to work on some scapula strengthening and I want to get a protocol like that, but I, uh, mm -hmm. my calf is, like I did some dry needling before in my my trap is just like overactive. My trap scapula is weak. It's from work. It's from my right. everything is forward, and um, I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's ever going to really resolve itself until I find a new line of work. But or don't work at all. I know. Oh. I need a sugar daddy. Really, is what. Uh, I mean, there is a website for everything. So how did you, how did you hurt your shoulder? Is it like from work I, or it's over time? Yeah, I heard it back in 2020 during lockdown because I was working like double time mm. cleaning. Clean, oh, that's right. Cleaning, opening doors, wiping everything down. Everything's like this forward motion. Pulling, right. I don't know, it was like, I opened a doors like 300 times a day. And I did yeah. that for like eight weeks straight so yeah i'll um, do it i was taking this prednisone which lowers your immune system and i can just feel like a bronchial like if i laugh hard and you turn into like that hyena laugh where it's just like hey, you know so I don't, yeah so i'm like you know I'm like on the verge of getting sick, but I don't want to get sick. And I feel like wow. oh, I should treat myself like this all the time, like this good. 
Like you everything. <laughs> you're like self discoveries. I know. Isn't it true though? When you feel like you're getting sick, you're like, I'm going to do everything. I'm like all the vitamin C, all the vegetables, like really. No, I'm like, please get sick. I want to take a day off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my attitude. I know it's stupid, but I'm fine with it. So like, it, yeah. it was uh, actually working just now. Cause I was like, I don't think I'm going to work tomorrow. And it's supposed to rain all day. And I can't freaking hate working when it's raining. So Oh, you don't like working when it's raining? Really? Well, because I got to go in and out of these buildings. So I'm like, in oh. and I didn't. Yeah. So it's like, then I'm all, yeah, it's just gross. And then like trying to clean up when like floors are like wet and yeah, vacuuming floors that are wet would leave. Right. Is like, it's probably never ending. Yeah. So that anyway, so I was just because I'm like, I'm going to be sick tomorrow and I'm totally taking it today. So. Well, good. You deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> you deserve to be sick, Dad. You do. You deserve to be sick. And um, I never realized that, like, prednisone lowers your immune system when it's supposed to, like, actually improve it. Well, it's, uh, so it increases cortisol. Okay. The healing process. And then that, like, affects your ad adrenals and mm. um and you also shouldn't be eating a whole lot of carbohydrates when you're taking prednisone because your body oh, yeah, it's cold water yeah and you tend yeah. to it's not utilizing your body doesn't use like utilize carbohydrates well so i was like right and it makes my mm. stomach all floaty and it's just yeah i don't like prednisone we put our dogs on it a lot for different ailments like you know of course like jade had covid and the pneumonia so she was on prednisone for a while it's it's very miraculous like nothing hurts. Mm, it should be yeah it yeah. absolutely yeah for sure but it's really bad for you it's yeah really yeah yeah that's why uh, I told my doctor i was like i don't want to take it she's like let's just give it a shot for you know five six days and then i messaged john to because i was like should i be training when i'm on this because mm -hmm. i can't feel anything hurting and he's like as long as you're doing higher reps and a little bit lighter weight he said mm -hmm. you're similar movement patterns like don't do anything you don't normally do and don't be going for prs but it's like when you're on prednisone too it actually contributes to muscle wasting so you want to keep right. fighting and intact so oh that's a good point yeah i didn't even think about that well now we know every day school day right this and is, I'm, this is, yeah i'm the guinea pig i <laughs> why not you're at that age. Who cares at this point, right? No, I've waited that. <laughs> That's what I keep saying. I'm like, oh my god, at forty, like, uh, how much longer do I have to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. This life, I mean, I'm joking though. Um, Sarah, you have a good uh, life, don't you? What? You have a good life. You love your life. Oh god, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm totally joking. Oh, little Athena is going to make an appearance, maybe. Yo. So, little baby. I have a great, um, <clears throat> what would you pick? Uh, okay, I know what you're going to pick, but it's still a okay. question. Okay, you can have, for the rest of your life, free, one, free gas for the rest of your life, free groceries for the rest of your life, free travel like flights or your pet lives as long as you do oh god well you know the answer yeah my pet for sure I, know. <laughs> I i was thinking my mom would be so disappointed in me but i would feel it yeah i love, I love why what would you pick i would my wife funny to live with me forever i love her so much my little Aww. are you kidding me how long do they live? I know nothing about them. Seven to 10 years. Seven to 10, okay. How old is your bunny? She is gonna be four. Okay, oh, she's not old, she's young. Yeah, so um, I saw a chart one time though. There's dog years. Yeah. And it's like, 
Yeah, she's like 45 right now. It's really ridiculous. Oh my God. Yeah, because what, you multiply it by seven? Yeah. With dogs. It's different for bunnies. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, because I mean, yeah, it's very yeah. similar. Because I was like, oh, she's only like two and a half. And it's like, oh no, she's like 35. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, I, I like to go with the, the lower number. <laughs> I'm like, I guess I should stop talking to her. Like, uh, she's a baby. She's like a businesswoman right now. <laughs> she's a CEO. Yeah. She's making all the money. Yeah. She's like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to act like a CEO. She's a CEO. <laughs> well, what's her name? Her name is Rue, like a, like a kangaroo, because she's got the little stub arms. That's cute. Yeah. I like that. Rue. Yeah. She's, I like that a lot. She's just great. I mean, it's just, it's so awesome having a bunny when you walk in. You feel like, I feel like Snow White every day when I walk into, you know, she comes, you know, like in the forest. I'm like, I got bunnies around me. I'm thinking Alice in Wonderland. Okay. All the same. All the same. That's a little too trippy. That's definitely not my life. <laughs> but, You're right. It is. Kind of, it is for sure. Yeah. But I. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, but my mom would be like, "That's irresponsible. You should pick berries or something." I know. <laughs> Leave it to mom to be like, "Oh, pick the, the responsible thing. Make the responsible choices." No, mom. Yeah, no, I'm like, no, I want my bunny to live forever. Mm -hmm. That will likely be, I only think about like the, the worst losses in my life would be like my mom, my mom, my daughter, yeah. and my bunny. Like, I don't really have <laughs> I I feel the same way, except it would be, yeah, my dogs, like. Yeah. Oh, I had to put one down. My, he was like my first adult dog that was like, you know, all mine, my best friend. Oh my God. He, that was the worst thing ever. It's been almost three years and I still have a hard time talking about it. So it's like, Aww. yeah. I, yeah. So it would be great if they could live forever with us. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Cats are so great. I did not appreciate mm -hmm. I did not appreciate them when we were younger. I mean, I lived on a farm and farm animals are different. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's just different. Well, I had, I mean, I grew up with a dog and I, I loved her, but I wasn't, I was like more of like a teenager. Like I wanted to go out with my friends. I didn't stay home and hang out with my dog. Whereas like now it's the complete opposite. <laughs> like I'd rather hang out with my dog than anything. We both do that. We're both like, uh, let's just stay home with the dogs. We'll order in always. Yeah. For sure. It never gets old. They're just, they're always so entertaining and they're always so like, yeah, oh, they're just great. Like whenever you're having a bad day, they're always like there to make you feel better, whether they know they're doing it or not, you know, like that's just, it's, they're always so happy. Yeah. I don't, well, when I was out cleaning earlier, I saw two dogs. One was like a little, she was a little, uh, like tan pity. So uh -huh. You know, she like came over and like people always apologize. They were like, oh, like, sorry, you're going to get, you know, she might jump on you or, and I'm like, I don't care. Like, I I'm know. we're home. <laughs> Except I have bunnies. So that would be really bad. But <laughs> I, yeah, your bunny wouldn't last very long. No, lately I love the, uh, like the little fluffy cream dachshunds. They're so cute. I oh, I don't know if I've seen them. They're like they're just long dogs. hair. Yeah, they're wiener dogs okay. with long hair and they're like blonde. Oh, so cute. I haven't not seen any. Yeah. There's been there's been so many like m missing dogs or found dogs or whatever. And people always call me. Like my clients will always call me. And they'll yeah. be like, oh my god, there's a dog down the street. And <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I want to come help, but I think, honestly, I think it's just because they just don't know who to call. And because I volunteered um, at the shelter before. Yeah. Um, and also like, so then I kind of, I know who to call. But yeah, most people don't really know what to do. They're like afraid to call the, the pound as they call it, which is not, I mean, you shouldn't be. Like they're going to be taken care of if, you know, if you call the pound. But anyway, 
there's been several of those lately. I think it's probably worse with, I feel like I'm complaining about the economy all the time, but I feel like it's worse when people are, I mean, I know yeah. people who, who can't even afford, you know, food right now, like a whole week's worth of food. So yeah. I would assume, you know, they're struggling to feed their pets then also. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like super, it's super tough, but yeah. And that's what I, that's always my hesitation. It's always been my hesitation with getting a dog mm -hmm. stuff to do because I'm like, I said to Anna, I'm like, there's so much upkeep in there. You have to make sure that you have money to take care of yeah. your dog. Time, obviously, but um, yeah. No, that's valid and that's responsible because I think that's why a lot of them end up at the shelter because people, a lot of times people, they go, something happens and they need like a surgery or something. And a lot of people just won't pay for that for animals. And so then they get, you know, left at the shelter because they can't afford it. Yeah. It's like, you know. I mean, but then you'll put your, you know, your other bullshit on your credit card, but you won't, you know, so there there's that where I'm like, you'll spend this on something that you don't need, but you won't take care of your animal. Like, why is that? But yeah, it's like everything. It's a commitment. It should be a really mm -hmm. process of whether or not you get an animal. I know people right. get, like adults, especially need to understand their kids. It is not going to take care of this pet. No, no. So, don't get it being like, well, I'll get it if you take care of it. That's not going to happen. You know, yeah. <laughs> teenagers are teenagers and they're, you know, they want to go out and hang out with their friends. And that's how I was. Because I think back to it and I'm like, man, I loved my dog, but like now I'm like obsessed with my dogs and I hang out with them all the time. So back in when I was in, you know, in high school, I didn't do that. No, so. no, absolutely not. I know we had that with the second bunny that we got too, because Anna was like, I love it. Wait, you have you have two now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and well, what's the other one's name? Blue. Oh, Rue and Blue. Oh, Rue and Blue. That's cute. Yeah, we didn't mean to make him rhyme, but he was like this tiny little, oh my gosh, he's so cute. Um, oh, you know what? Here, I can show you. Is, are you going to put him in your lap? <laughs> well, oh, I'm not going gonna... to. I'll go to Instagram. Oh. They, have, they both have Instagrams. <laughs> um, he... The small population of, of bunny Instagram. There's Aww, a Oh, he's cute. I know. He's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh there's a whole bunny cool. Instagram. So yeah, super fun. That is very surprising, but okay. There's a I huge, love it. It's a huge community. Rue has her own look at her Instagram Aww. is even better than mine, man. Shoot. So Girls get like 3,000 views. Yeah, she's getting like offers left and right from like different, you know, different businesses. <laughs> hey, I want to show you something here. Let's, let's see it. Let's, let's talk about her since she's not here. See this last picture that Brooke posted? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. Look at that. Oh, is that recent? Oh, my gosh. What is she wearing? Hold on, let me let me dissect this outfit. What is she wearing? Is that a fanny pack? It's a okay. Iron Rebel fanny pack, but Love she it. has um, this suit on, and she looks freaking amazing. She does. She always look. She always looks so good. I have mad respect for her because she really puts in the work, and she's very like, hum. Like she's quiet about it too. Like she doesn't. Yeah. Very put it everywhere. Nice. Yeah. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. Oh my gosh, she looks so great. So. Brooke and Melissa are, um, actually didn't hear back from Melissa, but that's okay. But, uh, Brooke is do uh, like, gotta be expediting or something like that right now. Oh yeah. Cause, oh yeah. Cause Jack Detone was posting pictures. So they have a show this weekend. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I had to shed a little bit right here. <laughs> She's so pretty. Is, is she wearing pants? Is he wearing pants? Yeah. Right here? Mm -mm. He's a, he's a, well, he's predominantly white, but then he's a double Merle. So he's got like the Merle oh, effect. 
it's the shape it's like uh there's like there's a shadow and yeah like and it, i mean he's got like white hair so it kind of i mean he kind of does look like he and he looks like he's wearing pants <laughs> he's like why are you grabbing my book <laughs> so funny oh i was just gonna i'll stop talking about the bunnies but i was just gonna say that anna wanted to get this bunny and then um she's allergic to him because he's got hair it's like uh yeah it's almost like a cat hair and she's allergic to cat oh. so yeah so he's in my room and then she'll come and play with him and then like she's like her eyes and everything is just running and she's like yeah oh so worth it though because it's so cute oh that's i have a client who's like that too she's like i'm allergic to dogs but it's so worth it when yours come out and I'm like okay <laughs> you're like okay then. yeah what's your boat oh my gosh um hey uh cadbury cream eggs overrated or underrated um in the past i would have said underrated and now i'm gonna have to go with overrated for sure You're overrated. Just, they 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 now they have like all these other flavors i mean they just they went a little too wild with it in my opinion kind of like, like calm oreo. it down like oreo like we just want the original yeah oreo and pop tarts also they they just like go buck wild with these flavors mm -hmm. and it's like they all taste the same they do yeah, yeah. they do the only distinctive flavor that i can ever taste anyway is like coffee like a coffee flavor oreo that's about it though i just got a coffee flavored oreo they suckered me in because there was a coffee flavored one and i was like okay i'll go i i love coffee flavored stuff i mean i do too I would, the only thing with the Oreos, I wish they came in like, like, cause they have so many different flavors now. I wish they came in like those individual packs, like the yellow ones do, yeah. the golden Oreos. Yeah. That'd be great. Or like a wow. what, are, what are they waiting on? Oh, get out of really? Oreo. They've got every flavor of the Oreos and now it's like, just bring out the sample packs, would ya? I, I like uh, coffee flavored coconut anything coconut uh-huh me too cookie dough marshmallow cookie dough marshmallow oh my god basically it's it's basically like anything sweet really yeah <laughs> it's and, all um, like this we're like fat girls we're fat girls at heart absolutely we're yeah a we're a disgrace to the bodybuilding <laughs> we're like I mean, honestly, I feel like that sometimes. I'm like, what? Like, get it together, together you know? Like, no, but you're you know so I, good. Oh, Bubba. You know what I think is really cool, though? So, we were kind of talking about this earlier about how some people, I feel like, never, it's almost like some sort of an addiction with this sport. Mm -hmm. And they're not able to, like, you walked away from it and you're just living like a normal life now. You know what I yeah. mean? And same with me, of course, like, and I said, that's caveat to you too, that I, like, I was never on your level or anything, but it's like, you learned when to stop chasing yeah. the spirit. And I mean, even to the point where like your goals right now with life are just being healthy, right? It's not even like building muscle or that type of thing, really. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, it's being consistent, being healthy and being smart about my training because I don't need to be, yeah. you know, I don't need to do those crazy things anymore. I don't need to lift heavy, heavy weight. Yeah. And I, and you realize that too, like the more you push stuff, like mm -hmm. or you're going to get injured or whatnot. I just think that there's so many, uh, so many of these, well, I mean, this is why we're running into these problems of having with the sport, you know? Right. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, well, obviously Cedric Cass, we had another girl. Stacy, yeah. So she, she was a bikini competitor though, I think. And yeah, and then I saw an old picture of her and I was like, I think she's like an older, like she's one of the OGs, like figure competitor, I think. Okay. But she had a different, she had her, her, I don't know what her maiden name is. But I could be wrong. I don't know that like maybe or she was bikini. I'm not sure. Okay. But she, regardless, like she wasn't, I mean, 
it's not like she was huge. That was like my first thought. It was like, it's not like she was like humongous or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, here's the thing. As the bodybuilding, like people are like, oh, more and more bodybuilders are dying. But as the community gets bigger, it's just like anything, you know, people die all the time. They do. So if the community right. gets bigger, we're going to have perspective and uh, that perspective, we're going to have more people dying for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I can't say anything about, I don't want to, I don't know anything about this girl. And if she had any past um, drug use or anything, steroid use or anything like that. But I know who had was talking about this on the real bodybuilding podcast. And they were saying, hey, you know, what do you think the factors are? And I was like, well, people in the natural bodybuilding world are not dropping dead. So let's talk about that first of all, you know, mm -hmm. drugs definitely do add a, a risk factor obviously yeah natural bodybuilders also are not able to get to the size that enhanced bodybuilders are so the size has to play a factor as well right yeah I think with bodybuilding of course everybody you know makes that assumption immediately like the first thing I think they go to or blame it on is steroids or diuretics and all that and of course that's I mean I would assume that is playing a part in a lot of these. However, I don't know if it's because of social media that we are all aware now, but like, I feel like it's more, more dying more, more recently in the last couple of years than in the past. But again, I don't, I'd have to go back and look and I don't know if it's because of, you know, where everybody knows now and everybody can share the information. Um, so I don't know if it's that or if it's truly like there is a problem. And I know like, cause I've seen people ask this, um, if there's a correlation between the vaccination and COVID and these deaths. And I mean, yes, we can assume steroids played a part, whatever. And some, if not all, but not everybody's necessarily using them. But at the same time, it's like, it's been around forever. Those things have been around forever. Like, I don't think we had the deaths like we do now. I'm, I just feel like there's something in the air like there's just something going on with like covid and the vaccinations but nobody wants to like everybody gets offended if you ask so yeah there's no, there's no doing that i well whether you get covid or you get vaccinated mm -hmm. there's been a lot of heart related issues both of those things i know i had i had heart issues for at least six months after i got after i got covid you know and yeah uh, low, low fraction ejection was measured with um, after I had COVID. And it took a long time for my heart rate not to become elevated from like low activity levels. It, it, there was a matched correlation. And I, I yeah. think that there's, I mean, a lot of, I, when we were talking about this before, you know, there's a lot of athletes in a lot of different sports, especially like soccer that are yeah. dropping. You know, and I think it's naive for people to think that there's not steroids involved in other professional sports because every single professional sport, maybe and maybe not to the degree, or maybe it's all the other factors that tie into bodybuilding. The you know the heavy eating, the uh, you know weight the, fluctuations. Yes, but yeah. you know you size is size when your heart has to work hard whether you have a whole bunch of muscle or a whole bunch of fat and obesity is a huge risk for heart disease as well just because mm -hmm. your heart has to work so hard so um i would say you probably have to work harder for muscle than it does for fat you're pumping a lot more blood through muscle than you are through fat you know right so no i, I agree i definitely think i i well, that's why I'm, you know, I made the comment like Stacy, that Stacy woman was not I felt like she was a huge girl, like huge muscular girl. Oh. So, you know, I, I don't like making inferences or like assuming something about her because I don't know, but it just seems like, like, what the hell, you know, like what is really yeah. the fact, like, I don't know. It's weird. Well, and I, you know, like I said, I mean, a couple of years ago, there was a guy I used to work with here, one of the maintenance guys, he was, I don't know, 43, 44 years old. He had lost like 60 pounds or 100 pounds or something running. And um, 
one day after work, he lived in the apartment building next to me. One day after work, he decided that he'd been running, getting ready for like half marathon or something. Went out for a run, made it like 50 yards down the road, just dropped. And he just dropped out of a heart attack, you know? And it's like, I mean, it does happen. Right. And I think, like you said, with social media and everything else, we do hear about this stuff more often. So it can be like it's more prevalent. But mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I'm not going to dismiss the, the COVID aspect of it or the vaccine aspect of it for sure. Right. And, and because like, I also think because there's so much COVID going around, like even like just normal, um, you know, being sick or whatever, like even just like a cold, I feel like it's it's lingering a lot longer in people just because of everything that's going on. Like it doesn't even have to have affected you specifically. I just feel like it's just in the air or something, you know? I mean, I, like after I got COVID, I couldn't breathe for, I still can't really fully smell. Not accurately anyway. <laughs> still don't have your smell back? No. Oh my gosh. It's, I mean, okay, I can smell something, but it's like a consistent smell for everything. So it's not like, it's not normal. This isn't like a normal smell. Oh it, it's weird. Yeah. And there's, and, and it's like, what are you going to do? It's not like you can go to your doctor because they'll just be like, oh, well, maybe like when I was having issues with like the fatigue for so long, my doctor said, well, we can submit you to, she's like Michigan or University of Michigan is doing long haul study if you want to, um, you know, be a part of that study or whatever. And mm -hmm. the information, but it's like, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're just going to study it, you know, and get right. information. So yeah, there's no like quick fix. There's no like, oh, here's a pill. Yeah. Um, somebody suggested like getting an IV of something, but I was like, I'm not going to go sit for an IV for like two hours for it to potentially work. Like, I don't care that much. For what? An IV of what? I don't remember what it was, but he was saying like, you know, those IV bars or like the, you know, my, those vitamin IVs that people do the infusions. Yeah. Um, like he was suggesting that and I was like, oh, I don't, I mean, I'm like nah. I'm like so skeptical about pretty much everything. All that stuff. Yeah, I am too. I am too. And it's like really expensive too. So I'm like, I will yeah. take the, if it comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't come back, it doesn't come back. I have a feeling that it'll come back eventually because I have the ability to smell. It's just not accurate. Yeah. Well, you had noticed it's getting better because before you were smelling like a burnt smell or something. So it's cute. Yeah. It kind of, it's weird. It goes back and forth. I think again, too, I think it's like all in my, a lot of it's like in my head too, because I'm like, what's true and what's not, you know, like what's the real smell when I can't smell my dog's own, like my dog's shit, then that's when I know that it's still not okay. <laughs> You're the one in the Alice in Wonderland world. I am. Everything's like strawberries. Oh, I, well, actually, strawberry. I don't like strawberries anymore. They don't taste that good. Oh. And chips and salsa aren't like as good as they used to be. Oh, that's bad. But I'm still eating them. Oh, it yeah. Ain't stopping, it ain't stopping this bad, girl. Do you have that, like, when you're sick? I'll be like, oh, maybe this food will make me feel better. Oh, maybe this food will make me feel better. And then you're like, yeah, I don't understand how people lose weight when they're sick because it's not. I know. Because the only thing that I can ever really taste is like something that's like super sweet. So it's like, well, Okay, I'm gonna to resort to that. That's totally backfiring. Yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. Um, I was gonna ask you, do you wanna talk about um TRT a little bit? What is it? You wanna talk about oh, TRT. TRT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hormone replacement. I'd love to. Yeah. So I wanna tell you, first of all, what happened. Um, so I had my did I tell you I got my blood work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got my blood work. Everything is low. Yeah. I'm basically an old raisin hag. What's, what's your, uh, can I ask, or if you want to disclose, I don't know if you want to actually disclose it or not. What was your testosterone at? Uh, we have it. I have it right here. Uh, I think it was. I'm just curious. Uh, uh, my, my numbers. Uh, 
I don't know. I can't find it. I will. I will find it. Uh, I gotta get away from these guys. Okay, I'm on, I'm on the move. I'm on the move. These these guys are acting crazy. Crazy <laughs> dog podcast. Basically, oh, I thought that was a turd on the floor. It's not. Thank God. Oh, my word. Um, it's normal. And the one that they, I can't find it now. So here. I can tell you what mine was the last time I went. Okay. You go first because I don't know why. I, I might have to look at my email. But it was low, obviously, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. flat. It was low. So that's weird because they, I, know, I thought I had printed it off. And um, and now I can't. Uh, it is so. Weird. It's not a turd. <laughs> <laughs> she picked. I was like, because they chew up these these this dog toy, and it like I really thought it was a turd. I was like, oh my god, no more turds in the house, please. Okay. Um, I know mine was at an eight the last time I went, but it was like, I don't know, it's been a while. I need to, I need to go back, and that's low for me. Yeah, I think. Um, what do I do with that for work? Okay, you basically are ruining this whole I know. scenario. How could you? Let's Just make it up. It. Just. <laughs> Just make it up. Uh, my testosterone was at zero. <laughs> They're like, you're dead. Yeah, it was. Exactly. I don't know because I thought that life extensions, um, life extension. Oh my gosh. Shh. Um, I mean, I'm glad that you, I will say I'm glad you went. I think that's, and had it done. Well, here's what's gonna, I don't know why. Uh, who did, okay, so who did you, you didn't go to your normal like like doctor, no. right? So, okay. okay, let me just stop looking for that. And then I'm gonna, um, maybe I'll pause it in a second. But so I talked to my doctor, my doctor was like, oh, well, we can't really check hormones through blood work because he's just an OB and he's dumb. Um, no. <laughs> No, I, it, it, it's good to know. No, it's good to know this because like for people, for women listening or men, like it's good to know because you're most general practitioners are not going to do the specific no. full panel. No, right. So yeah. that's, that's in your, yeah. No, well, it's not their wheelhouse. It's not. He's a baby doctor. He delivers baby. He delivers my daughter. He's been my OB ever since he makes sure that I don't have cervical cancer. That's what he does. Right. So mm -hmm. Um, he had referred me to a women's clinic, which was going to be pretty expensive, and um, I wasn't really sure. And then I talked to Sarah Bishop, who is a coach and a friend of mine, and she mm -hmm. said, you know, I would do your testing through Life Extensions and then go from there. So I did. And it was like $56. Um, I want to say my testosterone was maybe like a three or something. Um, it yeah. was not. Yeah, it was low. And then um, my progesterone was at a one, which is like okay. the scale is like one to something. So it was at the low end of the scale. Like estradiol was like 49, which is low. And then um, DHEA was, I don't even remember. They were all low. Yeah. So then last time, I, when I went to talk to my doctor about my shoulder, she was like, oh, we've had um, this guy who does HRT therapy. He does these pellets. He does pellet therapy mm -hmm. and she's like i've had like a lot of women come in who said that they really loved this and so they basically do blood work and then they'll and they do a, a little incision in your glute and mm -hmm. they put these hormone pellets in there last for like three months well there was a woman um who's on john Jewett's podcast who does hormone therapy her name is Serena Sloot. You can find her on Instagram, but her IG is private and it might take a little bit of time if you want to follow her. But the, the uh, podcast was really, really great. And I sent her a message because my concern was 
like it's kind of like the uh depro depro Provera birth control like oh you put it in yeah. and then it's like who knows like what happens yeah like what if it's too much or something and then they yeah. they don't take it out so I sent her a message and asked her about pellet therapy and she said exactly that she's like you can't titrate it once it's inside you mm -hmm. like, and, and they, they hurt from what I've heard, they, they, the, just put it like inserting them really hurts. Uh, like that's a big, yeah. So I wouldn't want to do that because I'm a baby. I don't like that kind of stuff. No. And she, well, and she said that she said they tend to overshoot and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, and then like for three months, what you're just like going crazy because you have like, I don't, I, I think that would be horrible. So yeah. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I actually called their office and I just wanted to know if he does a consult and they'll do like three not, and I'm going to go to um there's actually a compounding pharmacy near me yeah and i'm going to take my blood work into them and, and i'm going to look at that and so, nice yeah it's like anything right you are so much better off with i know you want to fix something quick but slow mm -hmm. and steady so yeah like, don't mess it up like i don't right. want to yeah I don't want any adverse side effects. And well, and that's, yeah, that's the biggest thing with this is that like, you know, though it's a spectrum. So like, it, you know, mine was like an eight and that's not, it's low, but it's not technically low, low. It's like not life threatening. And for some women, it'd be fine. But for me and like my past, it, I can tell when I'm, when I'm at like, you know, that eight, because it's like, I'm used to, I'm have experienced being a lot higher at a higher number. Yeah. So, you know, that's where like you have to start here so that you can then track it and then test again, see where you're at and see how you're feeling. Because if you jump from like, you know, three to like 250 or something, I mean, yeah, you're going to feel freaking amazing. You know, you're going to feel like you're on top of the world, but it's like, at what cost? you know, like you could still, you can still have side effects from any of those, um, you know, and, and that's not, the goal is not to like supersede what you should be at. It's to get you at a level that you feel good and you feel normal. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so it's, it's a lot safer, you know, and you're, you're less likely to have any kind of side effects if you start small and start like, you know, just like in a sense, experimenting with a certain amount and then you go back and test again and then you know, it should be an ongoing thing, not just like a one-stop shop. So yes. do you have like an answer to like your, like what your plan is, or is that what that clinic will do? Like the compounding place? That's what the compounding place does. So they go, okay, good. go consult, they'll compound whatever um, creams. And then you have to obviously go back and, and yeah. with them. And I, I will, you know, if they don't do a repeat of blood work, you know, in two or three months, I would probably do a repeat of blood work just to see. But like you said, it's more important how you're feeling, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to overshoot because I mean, then yeah. you just have to keep doing that much. Well, and I don't, I don't, and I don't yeah. want to have to, I don't want my voice to keep in and I don't want, you know, I don't want any of these side effects, which right. You know, people you're doing it for general, it's for health, for your general health and well being. It's not to get on stage and be like, you know, super shredded. Yeah, and yeah. I, people don't realize that because, I mean, I know of women who have done, uh, you know, a prep and it's like mm -hmm. their defense or they get side effects and it's like, well, you probably, you know, whatever, whatever they did was um, certainly wasn't a little bit of Anivar or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like they were, they weren't just doing like one or two, like, you know, small, and that's the thing, like what people don't realize is that like, oh, just because you take steroid, like steroids aren't just like a one class kind of thing. Like there's like multiple classes and functions and they're not all just going to do the horrendous, like, you know, getting the viralization, like they don't all do that. So like when people are like, oh, you're going to do HRT, they, they automatically they assume that you're going to like try to, you know, start injecting to get on stage. And it's like, no, 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 it's, it's for health and well being, And it shouldn't change anything about your quality of life. Well, and this is why, like, especially when you're messing with testosterone, the, mm -hmm. I think uh, I heard like John was talking about this too. What you would inject for TRT is such a tiny little bit. That's why they don't normally do it. Yeah. That's why you use a cream because you can't get the 
dose small enough really for it to be safe on a long term basis if you're not checking it regularly. So and most people and most your average person's not going to want to inject themselves and or go to the doctor once or twice a week just to get that injection. And I will tell you, like I had a client who um, she was her boyfriend uses some something some clinic down in Florida. So she started using them. And I had recommended my my uh, HRT doctor because she's local and I trust her. But anyway, she they they immediately started her on injectable testosterone and she got like when she told me the amount, like it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like, oh, that's you know, you're definitely gonna go into like, you know have all these side effects so but she did she ended up having she got she gained like 16 like she was gone for like a couple weeks when she came back I was like oh my god what happened so it was like just tons and tons so now we're she's going to my girl but she's having to reverse everything that she did and I think the reason is because she injected it. And so it was like, in a sense, yeah. even though it was like a low amount, it was like stronger to her because she had never done anything before. So she was like a little baby to it. Hey, quit. Sorry, a little disciplining there. <laughs> Show, showing my uh, authoritarian, authoritative skills. Here's like, doggos. Except dogos. I'm not the authoritative one. Tiffany is. And she, when they, when she comes out, mama means business so yeah like she had horrible side effects from it but again i think it was because instead of they should have started her on like a cream or the trochies but yeah. instead they started her immediately on injectable and it like it went wild for her like so it just she had a lot of adverse side effects from it um so that's another thing to think about too if you've not injected i wouldn't jump into that how about that? It's such, such a small amount. You know, I know girls who have like, it's like, it's the girls who do prep because of their boyfriend is doing their prep and they just do like, well, you can just do a low amount of testosterone. And it's like, you not see wow. that her face has changed in the last three months doing this prep. It's like, and that doesn't change back, you know? No. And, it, and you can't, like, you can't pinpoint why they look a little bit more manly, but it just, the face looks more manly and right. you are like, it doesn't change back. Like you don't no. back. So yeah. You get hard, you get that hard look. It's a hard look. Like I really, that's like the best way that I can describe it. Cause I try to, I'm like, what, what's different here? But I think it's just like a really, like, it's just a hard look, but a lot, I think the, the thing is going into the sport, a lot of people are like, when they say that, when they hear you say that you want to compete, they just assume like you want to do, like you want to do well. And because everybody else is on this playing field, they're going to level the playing field regardless because they're like, Oh, well, you said you want to compete. So it must mean that you want to be competitive and win, you know? So here's what we'll do. Um, instead of just like actually going, uh, what's your, you know, intended future goal with this? You know, do you want to continue to step on stage? You don't even know if you like, you like competing. Yeah. That's what I always say. There's you don't even know if you're going to like it. There's no reason to be using any type of performance enhancing drugs if you're going to step on stage for the first time. Oh, God, no. And if you're, my rule was always when I was coaching, it was always like, okay, first timers. And if you're like, this is, I mean, not that this is like, you know, a science-based approach, but um, if you're under 25, I was like, nope, definitely not. Absolutely. And that's just a number that I like threw out there because I would always get girls that were like 21. So I kind of just like, that was my umbrella. I was like, oh, well, sorry, you don't meet the criteria. And don't ask again. <laughs> and if you want, you'll have to go somewhere else because I, I was not, because I, more than anything, I didn't want to deal with the aftermath of it. No. You know, that was like for my own, my own well-being. And of course I care about my girls too, but like, you know, I, I said, it'll be fun during this whole thing. And once you get on stage, but then afterward, you're going to like struggle. I promise you that. You'll struggle in so many ways. You have no idea. So, nope. What do you mean? What do you mean you're going to struggle in many ways? I think, um, you know, because you go from looking amazing with the help of, of PEDs. Um, and it, even if you're not using anything, like you go from looking amazing and working your butt off for this goal. And then afterward, you're just like, yeah. Wah, 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 bang. You know, I mean, like you lose all that. And then, you know, the weight gain comes because it's inevitable and it's going to happen. And, you know, then you throw a compound on top of it 
I mean, emotion, it messes with your emotions. It's your hormones. Imagine like, yeah, like when you're on your getting close to your period, I know I, I'm, I'm sensitive anyway, and I cry, but like the day before, oh girl, I will cry over everything. So can you imagine like actually manipulating your hormones even yes. more so? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I say like afterward, it just, you, cause you have to come off of that stuff. Like you can't do it forever and ever. So it's, it definitely becomes like an emotional roller coaster that I don't think people are prepared for. They just don't know that, you know, the fun, the fun's over now. So it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cause yeah, you go through your post post show blues depression afterwards and then. Right. And ima- and yeah, just throw some added shit on top of that. Then you're like, Oh, well, 10 times the mess. You no, have thank to, you. Yeah. Have to learn and i think people should learn to see how they handle it. i know some people don't have a problem with it and handle it very well but if you're mm-hmm. me, yeah. like, i'm the same way very emotional i laugh when you said that my daughter is like that too like she's yeah like, oh, God, i don't know why oh <laughs> <You know? laughs> tell anna i feel i feel her pain i feel her like it's okay and you don't have to have a reason <laughs> you know <laughs> screw it <laughs> damn hormones it is yeah so, yeah it is yeah and i think some i mean guys mm-hmm. if athena a guy, that's athena can you hear her she's in the she's like a tiger or something <laughs> if um if you're a guy who is already like an asshole or who has a temper mm-hmm. you not add drugs on top of that because it yeah. will only amplify it is a thing yeah, that is a real thing. And it's not for, like, that's not the case with everybody. I always say, like, if you're a mean drunk, then you're going to be, it'll be, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. If you're just a mean person or angry anyway, like, you're just making it worse. Yeah. So. You're not going to be able to control it any more than, like, you know, when you have, like, I remember even when I was married, because I always had terrible periods, and it was like, I would just pick a fight and get into a fight with my husband and mm-hmm. then like, my period would come the next day and I'd be like uh, I know why I did yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I know why you did that too and I was like I don't know why I did it I can't help that I mean I know why but it's like I can't help the whole I don't know why but I know why <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so I think, well, and this goes back to our personality as well. Like when, mm-hmm. like where you know what your limits are and you, you're like, this, this is as much as I can put into this sport and um, yeah. it's done. So, and I think some people have that, like you said, there's a combination of a body dysmorphia, chasing this dangling carrot and not knowing when to, you know, because people off drugs, add more drugs and more drugs because you got to do more drugs and more drugs. And then, you know, we've seen some, oh, oh so what are the side effects, you know, possibly death um, or looking totally like a man, mm-hmm. uh, you know, losing all of your hair and just, you know, looking totally like a man. And when, and some of these, I see some of these girls making these transformations. Like you said, they're under 25 years old and in two or three years time, what you know, many of the pros in the industry, including yourself, took 10 or 20 years to do. So mm-hmm. yeah, so it, it is, it's craziness. I think social- Well, and at 20, can you imagine like, remember what you were doing at like 20, between like 21 and 25, like, you know, in a sense, we were still kids and we were acting, you know, like yeah. kids. We didn't have like that emotional maturity to make the right decisions, you know, and it's the same thing with like, you know, when in high school or when you drink or you start smoking cigarettes, because you're like, I know the side effects, yeah. but I'm still going to do it anyway, because I'm not worried about the future right now because I'm too young to worry about the future. So that's, I think that really is a lot of it too. Well, you were, you, know. you were a cigarette smoker, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh Yeah. I, it's exactly the same. Like I know it was wrong. I started smoking cigarettes when I was 19. I didn't quit. I smoked for 10 years. Mm-hmm. I smoked I'm surprised years. by that. Well, you know. I thought you were like Mother Teresa, basically. <laughs> I have higher expectations. No, I'm kidding. 
I mean, but it's an easy thing to get hooked into. And I was like eighth grade because it was cool to try it. I never inhaled because I didn't know how to inhale. <laughs> My friends would call me out. I'm like, that's embarrassing. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I mean, I smoked for a really long time because again, I thought it was cool. And I was like, I have plenty of time to quit later in life. And it's the same thing with these P- PEDs because the effects aren't right away. Like you don't notice it until you come off. And when you cut like, but, but during the on, when you're on, you look so good. You, I think you can like blind yourself to the, what is probably going to happen when you come off of it. That's when all the shit comes back and all the, like, that's when you really see all the horrible effects that it's going to take on you. I, I have seen some girls that it, it's really, it's like, uh, you know, maybe two, like probably two years of, I would say they're hundred percent on their diet and training, but they're definitely a hundred percent on too much drug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the way you just said that, but they're a hundred percent on it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It, you'll look back, like I'll go back and look at their old Instagram photos and I'll be like yeah. two years ago. Wow. You look like you had a, you know, probably even a decent amount of muscle. And it's like, you definitely have somebody put you on testosterone or D ball or. And, it's, and it, that would be stupid. That's the dumbest thing. I mean, honestly, that would be the dumbest thing to do. Like there's no reason for, for girls to do that. No. Well, here's here's where I'm going with this. Okay, what is the point of getting yeah. a pro card with women? Here, okay, here's what I wanted to talk to you about. So I'm listening to um, real bodybuilding podcast, and one of the questions was when uh, when did bodybuilding start paying you back? So who had asked this? Right, you laughed, but let me finish. Uh, yeah. Who had asked this? And Nick said, Nick Walker says, I put in nine years before I got my pro card. And then that's when it started to pay me back. And for women, the answer is never. Right. It never, it's, you don't get a return on your investment at all. So you really need to think about the importance of getting a pro card as soon as possible. Because all you're doing is, expediting virilization and health risks you know Mm -hmm. i mean i hate to i know i love that i could talk to you about this because we're outside of the sport and looking in and i don't have to be it's not that i don't love the sport and i don't love the athletes of the sport but you know some of it is you know, is kind of messed up. And I always want to oh, yeah. understand. I think even, I think now it's, I think, especially now with everything, it's definitely getting even a, a worse rap about it. Will you, Tiff, will you turn on those, the lights? Thank you. And it's getting dark in here because I think it looks like it's going to rain. But I think because, I mean, I somebody sent me a video today that um, he was like, basically the title was like something like, everybody needs to quit bodybuilding, essentially. So it's like, oh, okay valid and I listened to some of it and a lot of his points it wasn't just about like the drug use it was about a lot of like you know other other things other facets of it and I you know I agree 100% um there's a lot of uh, I use the term ate up and like by that I mean like you are so consumed with it or with with anything in life and you're so consumed with it that it like basically it skews your view of reality Yes. And, you're, you know, and I, I, I can honestly say when I was in my twenties, when I started, like, I could say that I was, I was that girl. I was kind of ate up by it. Um, but I was fortunate enough. And I will always say this, um, the gym that I was at, like I, there were, well, one of the girls, uh, she won, I think 2008 figure Olympia. And there were several other girls and guys in there that were on the national level or pros already as figure competitors or bodybuilders. So like I had a lot of great people around me that even though they were super serious, they were also very like transparent about things. And I learned of the, you know, the crap basically before I even started compete or, you know, as I was getting into competing. So like, I, so I'm, you know, I'm not like, I, I wasn't jaded by any of the things that I saw, or, you know, well, you cause had- I already knew. I already knew you had responsible people steering you away from the crap rather than 
like leading you right into this path of like you need to do all these drugs in order to do um you know and i still see yeah. too like if you need to do a bunch of work it's not for you like, right if you don't, that's the thing. I, another misconception is like, if you don't have good genetics to back up what you're doing, you're not, it's not, you're not helping yourself. It's not like, it's not like it's a magic pill. It really, like people always say that. And it's like, it's really not though, because you could, if, if you don't have the body for it, um, you're not going to get anywhere. Like it could, you could put like 10 bottles of of test in your body and you still you would just be a mess really like i mean that's it's you know it's like those guys who you can tell are like is it i always say get these ectomorph is like the super tiny right yeah so ectomorphic people with that body type that are naturally just like super thin you can always tell when they go on and off stuff because when they come off they shrivel right back up because their body is not meant for that like it's just not going to happen yeah you know that, that's when you just have to give it up or they're not, those are also the people that aren't putting a lot into training. Like if you're a guy and you drop 25 pounds when you're, you're off versus when you're mm -hmm. on, I know, I know a couple of people like that. I do too. Yeah. It was just like, like you don't train that hard because you can't keep the muscle on you when you cycle off. You mm -hmm. And their bodies just aren't meant for it. And so again, so it's not like this magic pill. I think you know, we talk about these things and it's definitely very accurate. No matter what, people are still going to do this. You know, it's not like, yeah. but I, I, you know, so the best advice I could give somebody is do all, do the research, do more, do so much research. Don't, don't just listen to somebody. Don't be somebody's puppet. Definitely yeah. look into people's experiences, the science behind it. Don't just like, don't just listen to somebody. That's not a good idea. And know that you can take the time to yeah. build. Like you should take the time to build. Otherwise, whatever you take is is not going to necessarily help you. Yeah, and, you're going to have more complications. I just feel like social media isn't helping anything. You know, because it makes everybody think like they're all overnight successes. You know, right? You see all these pictures. You see. Um, yeah, I just I just struggle with that a lot because you can't see, you know, Kira, your 20 year journey that it took you to get you to the mm -hmm. elite. Right. So back yeah. in back in the stone age when I first started, there was not social media. There was probably just, I probably just had a pager at that point too. <laughs> <laughs> and an atlas to get around to find my way. Map. <laughs> a map. Yeah. There was no map quest. The I used a globe. I had a globe in my car, okay, and I spun it. No, I'm just joking. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I remember pulling the map out of the glove box for like family trips and stuff. Yeah, and then you print, or you print out the the directions. My dad always printed out the directions. Oh, nice. Yeah, not that we ever drove far, but like he would just yeah, he'd have to print out the directions. Like, uh, those were the days. Yeah. I yeah, know. I think that social media is a um i mean obviously it can, it, you can filter through it if you know what you're talking about but bodybuilding itself the sport has so many like interwoven things that it, it's so hard to just explain to somebody for the first time like who wants to get into competing it's so hard to explain everything about it you go you're just basically going into the unknown and you know i always have that conversation a lot of these people are going to take step they're going to look you know this way da, 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 da. but um you can't compare yourself to anybody that's what it has to come down to. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're, Brooke had said that she want. we're going to do another episode about talking about competing for, especially mm -hmm. for first time competitors. And I think it'll, yeah. be, we can, we can lower the, we can dumb it down a little bit to like, like these are very basic first things that you need to think about when you get mm -hmm. involved. In I think, yeah, that'd be great. That would be a good thing to do. Yeah. So, but I am struggling a lot with social media lately. I'm so sick of it. Mm -hmm. Everything is triggering me. Like, I'm yeah. like, people are so dumb. <laughs> That's because you're a year older now. So it's like, you're, oh. you're older, wiser, maybe, you know, <laughs> a little bit more like uh, youngins, you know? 
Mm-hmm. This happens. Um, yeah. Eyes. You know what I mean? It's like when you're at the uh-huh. gym. Don't look around at other people training. It's going to piss you off. It is. Yeah. Especially, I can tell you, especially if you own a gym, like you'll just go, you'll bite your nails. You're like, oh my God. Like I had to yell at this kid the other day. Uh-huh. I mean, and I'm not that person, but he sings super loudly in the gym and he grunts over like everything, but that I don't necessarily care about, but it's the out, like the super loud singing when he has headphones on. And I mean, oh, dude, you're just like, like, do you, how thirsty are you? Yeah. And fine. I was finally like, I turned around. It was just me and I was training a client and it was him and one other girl. And I was like, stop singing out loud because I had already approached it and said oh what song are you singing oh you can hear me oh really don't play that game so finally yeah after like this has been going on for months okay I finally just yelled at him and I was like oh he thought I was joking though go figure (laughs) but he hasn't he's he has since then stopped but that's like one of the like stupid things that you're just like man etiquette just gym etiquette people don't Oh, okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you what happened with me. Cause I, th- that's what I don't like is the selfishness of people understanding whatever space they're in. Other people also have to share that space. Mm-hmm. So I, one of the buildings I was cleaning, I don't know how you feel about, well, so we were talking about cigarette smoking. Like mm-hmm. I now personally think cigarette smoking is like the most disgusting thing. Right. Oh yeah. It's like For sure. so gross. Well, this couple came out of their apartment and there he had a lit cigarette and was walking down the hallway with a lit cigarette and like walked out the stairwell and everything. And the everything's and he actually ashed on the floor. Oh my god. On carpet. On carpet where I was vacuuming. I'm like Oh, that's annoying. Well, and it's like you could have started a fire, dude. Like right. so it can happen. Oh, it could happen. And like you're sweeping, so it's like you're gonna blow that around. Yeah. Don't be a, um, how and like that's just pure laziness and just like yeah. why like why you couldn't fin- finish your cigarette and like oh we're gonna leave oh well let me right. have a cigarette in our stinky apartment it's, right it's not it's, we know this is not your first rodeo so yeah. why would you no yeah uh, like in their 50s so it's not like oh god oh my god that's even worse like if you're a dumb teenager like not all teenagers are dumb but if you're a dumb teenager you dumb teenagers, <laughs> all of you out there. Um, like, you know, because you know, like, you're just being, you're like, screw it. I don't care. I'm being a jerk. But you're at 50 years old. Come on now. I know. Just don't be so inconsiderate. Not everybody wants to smell that crap. No. It yeah, I don't like it. It really lingers, too. It's just, oh, gross. yeah. It's just gross. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I've had a couple people at uh, the gym that were singing, too. And I, I just, <sighs> I'm like, what? You know, everybody is staring. Yeah. At yeah. I'm like, so I can't. You, tell you're just you. You just want the attention. We get it. We get yeah. it. I mean, this kid would like belt out like full bars. You know, <laughs> I mean, it might have been Beethoven. I don't even know. But like, it's I. I you know, I was like, it's jarring when like, say, I'm trying to squat or something, and all of a sudden I hear you just like, you know, sing Celine Dion. I mean, like, that's just. Yeah. You should be like, you should be like, oh my gosh, dude, Uh, it's American Idol. They're calling. They want. (laughs) I I couldn't even be that nice about it. I finally was just, yeah, I was like, oh my God. I mean, I probably like threatened him, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to cut you. I'm probably going to shank you when you leave. But (laughs) like, you know, you try to be like, you try to be courteous about it. But at some point it's like, I don't even care. I don't even, I'm not even going to be nice about it because you're, you, you know, you're doing it and you know, you're being really loud. You're going to have to put up like no karaoke signs. <sighs> yeah. Along with like all the other stupid shit things that we have to remind people of. Like, didn't think I'd have to remind. Okay. Um, really? Yeah. Like, like, I, it's like trash goes in the trash. <laughs> right. Please flush. Please put the seat down. Crazy. Please pl- plunge your own shit. Oh my god! I, I yeah, I just sometimes I'm like, really though. Yeah, I remember my. <laughs> how did you make it this far in your life? My uh, my old gym, my manager would talk about that. How she's like, yeah, like people are like 
they find like when people would just shit on the floor and stuff like that or in the showers it, it's oh my god like i can't what is wrong with you what is yeah are you just like and you know what why wouldn't you clean it up like especially here because we are a small gym like there's three bathrooms and what did you think I wasn't going to, I mean, I went up to him and I was like, you owe me dinner or something. And there's a plunger right next to it. Like what I just had to do, you should be embarrassed and your wife should be embarrassed. Yeah. Like that horrible. Revoke memberships. Uh, I know. That's why Tiffany's always like, I don't care if he ever comes back. I'm like, we, I mean, unfortunately it's like people that we really, you know, it's like somebody that we like and that's like really good natured. And it's like, he's just dumb. Like it was just, I was like, you must just be, I don't know, lazy or dumb. I don't know. When you find out something so, <sighs> so you're disappointing. Like, yeah. You're like, so you're the type of person that mm-hmm. is the toilet, you're the next to the toilet. You're yeah. Gonna you're just gonna be like, ah, oh, I don't know how to use it. Ah, oh, who cares? Are you? I would scoop that out with my hands if I had to. I would, that's, that's my thing is like, I would just be embarrassed or shit in the trash can and throw it away, right? Like, you know what that's about. That's what I'm gonna do is leave bags in there and be like, this is a, a poop bag if you need it. Please treat it like dog poop. Pick it up with a bag. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, how do you know that I pooped in a trash can? Because you told me the story. Oh, wait, you didn't tell me on, you told me off cat's out of the bag <laughs> yeah just just know that like whatever you tell me might slip out at an inopportune time and there we go <laughs> everyone shat their pants i mean at least you made it like into a receptacle i'm just watching dog we we should have recorded that like i think you're moving forward the, uh, the original story yeah. of you shitting in a trash can yeah. And then you shitting your pants. Oh, a hundred percent. I will tell that story over till the day I die. Cause there's like multiple, I, but I have like multiple stories of different times that I've shat myself. And it, it always makes me giggle. It's like a proud moment for me. Moment. Well, as long as we learn from our experiences. I don't, yeah, I don't, somebody, one of my friends, Kim, she was like, Whatever you do, don't trust a fart. I didn't learn from that. Yes. And poor Kelly, I've shared I've shared my stories about Ke- Kelly with you because I, I feel like you guys are like long distance pen pals and I'm like the mediator. And yeah. I tell you like, she'll be like, tell Deb I said this. <laughs> I feel like, because I feel like you two would be like such good friends. It's a bit over 40. Yeah. We'll have her on the podcast sometime. She can join. Oh, she would be, yeah, she's fun. She's good people. You're going to have Tiffany on? Tiffany would be like, no, I'm not going to. She'd say no. <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate realness. Oh, she's, Tiffany's like the, she's 100% real. Like sometimes yeah. too real, you know? Sometimes I'm like, that's just, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I'm like, sometimes it's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> good so what'd you do for your birthday oh how old are you now should we disclose that 46 damn big four six i I, I, it's crazy yeah that's crazy i don't i don't even know i hate to sound like uh an old broken record but i do not know where the time went i don't Right. That's probably what got me thinking about social media. I do love your approach to social media where you're just like, whatever. Like you mm-hmm. definitely are not a slave to it. I wouldn't say I am either, but I can I can definitely get caught up in the, um, I just need a distraction. So I'll flip yeah. on Instagram. And I think that's unhealthy. So I, I limited my time. So I have to log in, um, you know, I have to do oh, yeah. like log in. So um, yeah, so don't get caught up in it too much. And I felt like that needed to change because when I see stuff, it pisses me off. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it's not just like the people I follow. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm like, ah, yeah, 
need to be off the staff a little bit more. So, um, the, yeah, the, I think from it, mine probably stems from like where I've been with it. Like as far as I mean, no tra nothing traumatic, but like ha like constantly feeling like I had to keep up with it just to like put you know it was like a popularity contest when I was competing. At least for me, that's how I felt. Yeah. And constantly having to like be inspirational or like post something. I'm like, I don't have any, like, it's going to be a repeat of crap. And now that I'm like, you know, redoing my Instagram, it's kind of like everything's in the past. Cause I don't want to share too much personal stuff or like yeah. personal pictures. Um, so it's like, uh, what, what do I, so that's why I'm a smart ass about it. Cause I'm just like, here you go. This is, this is because I know I look good in those pictures. So here you go. I mean, that really is all it is for me though so i think so for so it's easy like for, for my attitude about it to be really flippant because i mean it wasn't there was i was putting so much stress on myself to like yeah. you know be cool and you know constantly post and constantly get followers and it was like you know i i realized i, I was like man i'm getting too old for this and um so yeah i mean i think you'll i think you eventually get there you know but it's, it's also, it's a catch 22 because for your business, for my business, I mean, it, it makes sense and it works and it's kind of the way that people get information anymore. So, yeah, I know. So I, to me, it's like, do I keep posting stuff or do I just share like the podcast on my story? You know what I mean? Like I, I eventually, yeah. I feel like, like either I'm going to find something real, like I did a poll on my story that was like, what do you guys want to see? Like, do you want to see workout videos? Do you want, like, I was just like, what kind of content are people mm -hmm. actually following me for? Cause I'm really kind of over just the stupid selfies. Like I just get over the selfies. Like I don't want to do selfies unless you I take good. I will say you take really good ones though. <laughs> like, so I don't know. I don't know where you went to school to learn that, but that was like, <laughs> well, that's why um, I'm so good at posing. Yeah, is a self, it's it, there's a correlation. I think you yeah. should learn how to do a good selfie that you probably will also present yourself well. In it's so bad. Mine are so bad. I can't do it. <laughs> but you're a good poser, so I guess it doesn't even make sense for you. Stop. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Okay. Okay. So tell me about your birthday. What'd you do? So, um, well, I want to say thanks because I got obviously text from you and I got um tons of texts and things from messages and that was really really fun um I worked a little bit I trained uh shoulders got a good workout in and then um <clears throat> and then Anna and I were gonna go out to dinner at the cheesecake factory but it was mm -hmm. so rainy and yeah. we were just I was like I don't want to drive to Garner it's like a, almost like an hour drive Ew. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to drive there. And then Anna was like, I don't really feel like going out to dinner, but we can go out to dinner if you want to go out for your birthday. And I, I love like, that Anna's like, I don't want to go out to dinner for your birthday. So <laughs> she's like, not she's like, like too bad, mom. You, but then she goes, but I'll go if you want to go. So we were going, <laughs> back, we were going back and forth. <laughs> and, um, about I love her. We going to go. And uh, she was like, we can just get you to go, bud. And home and watch castle and I was like we could I don't really want to get I was like you know I eat chicken and rice like every day so right. I really want to go to Qdoba and then I was like I really want a salad or a burger she was like we could go to Red Robin and Red Robin I think around here we basically we walked in and I was like that is trashy here and she goes she goes I feel like we're in McDonald's if McDonald's had a seating area <laughs> It was like super, it just was kind of she's like funny. She's whole, funny. Yeah. It was like Walmart, it was like Walmart had a restaurant. That, yeah. And it was I think that's right? yeah, it's kind of like the lower end of like yeah. you know, dining out or whatever. I don't yeah. I think I've eaten at one like yeah. one time, a long time. There's not a lot around here. I'd have to like really search one out, but yeah. And it's it was good. But I'll, mm -hmm. tell you, I'll tell you the funny thing that happened. So our wait, our waiter server was like super goob. This guy was just such a goob. Okay. Like I was like, ah, like I'm sure. And he was okay. And so he was helping out this other table and there were like six 
teenage teenage like ish boys. Oh and god. I do, like this guy, I'm sure they just think like he's right. Like, you, okay. And um, so we were getting like he hands us the bill. <clears throat> we're getting ready to go. And I go to the bathroom, I come back. And Anna's like, I think all those kids left without paying. Oh, like, oh my gosh. And because he picks up the, uh, he picks up the receipt and he made like this face and he looked at right. one of the girls' servers, right? And so I was like, oh. And I was like, well, at the very least, you know that they didn't tip shit. Right. You know? So I was like, let's just leave him a huge tip because I'm sure oh. he doesn't, you know, I, I thought he's so, he was so socially awkward anyways. I'm like, I know he doesn't make great money here. I can, you know. Right. So we ended up like leaving like a $40 tip, which was. Oh, that was nice. That's, you know, and I, cause I don't know if you've ever been a server, but like when somebody just like surprises you like that and you get them every once in a while, it, like it makes, I'm sure you made his day on yeah. your birthday well at that point you know it's like it's so funny how people are stingy about tipping it's like what difference does it make if you spend ten dollars or fifty dollars on a tip like what mm -hmm. difference does it make? what's like two more bucks yeah that's how i am because we always we always do like uber eats so i'm always like yeah. you know they're they're going out of their their way even though they're making money they don't make that much they have to rely on tips so i'm like they're going out of their way for me i kind of i like i like to make sure Cause, and I've been there too. I've been a server. It's like, I've, I had a group of like ladies from great clips. There was like a party of like eight to 10 or something. So tips included, they over tipped me with coupons to great clips. I was like, does this hair look like it's going to go to great clips? Are you kidding me? Girl. I was like, no, no, no. And then, so for like, that's like nothing to them. Like that's no, they don't lose out any money on that. And then like, I've had, like, I've had, you know, of course people being rude to me, but I'm a smart ass. So it's like jokes on you when I stick my finger in your food. Um, and then <laughs> I mean, I would, yeah, I, I would do that. And then like, you know, I've had people that would like, like do the same thing. They would stiff me. They wouldn't, you know, pay. And then I would have people leave me like a hundred dollars of a tip, you know? So like you get the serving world is so interesting because you get kind of like those ebbs and flows, but I'm sure you made his day. That was really sweet. Awesome. I would have chased those motherfuckers out of the, in the, the restaurant and beat the fuck out of them. Anna, where are you at with that? Tell Anna next time that's the only time she can get into a fight. <laughs> Standing up for the greater good. Well, so when I had to go get my blood work done, we had to drive about, uh, we went to Pawpaws, it's like 20 minutes away. It was a walk uh -huh. with the, with the, had the um, it's not wherever the life extension is, but, um, and while we're in Walgreens, this guy goes running out of Walgreens and the manager goes like chasing after him, he comes back in and he's holding a bag. And, and I'm like, did he just steal? And like, here's the funny thing. I don't know how you good you are at like reading people. Mm. When we walked into the Walgreens, Anna and I were both like, that guy is acting super shady. Wow, well, oh, yeah. It turns out he had had a Walgreens bag with him and he was filling it up with stuff, making it look like, and then he just ran out with this bag. Oh my God. But the kid who was ringing up my, uh, my stuff that we bought there, I was like, did he just steal all that stuff? And he's like, yeah, and we can't do anything about it. Exactly. They can't. Yeah. No, because it's like they're not supposed to chase after because of their um it's a risk to their life or right. Whatever. There's like like there's they could get sued. Cause like out in I think it was San Francisco, there was a ton of like Walgreens and or CVS stores that had to close because they were li like literally the prosecuting for petty theft was like nothing. It was like stupid. It wasn't worth anybody's time. Yep. So people just go in and like, how it's just, it's like, where's the bunch of pussies? Like, where's the accountability? You know, like, why can't we go after, if you know somebody like, yeah. stole, and if you're, the thing is, if you're wrong about it, then yes, you can get in big trouble. Yeah. But I've, I've been in a Walgreens and some woman came up to me and was like, can I look in your bag? And I'm like, what? Why? Okay. Why? Just because I'm like, you know, I was like in the middle of like teaching. I had just 
left the school for my break. And I'm like, I have to go back to school. Am I going to get arrested for this? Like I go back to teaching, like what is this? And she, so I let her look at my bags. I'm like, I got nothing to hide, but I was just like, that was brazen of her to ask me. Like, I don't even know what, what I did to give her the impression that I was stealing. That's so funny. Wait, you were a teacher? Yeah, I taught special ed. Oh. Okay. That's why I say I'm a good trainer. Oh, <laughs> you are like. Oh, I'm a therapist of sorts. You are such a good person. Oh, stop. Yes, there is a special place in heaven for you. I would, I'd kill somebody. The only reason I'd kill somebody is over, like, for my dogs. So I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would kill somebody for my dogs. There was, like, there's this dog that's been missing and, and like, did you ever watch the show Don't Fuck With Cats on Netflix? No. <laughs> it's basically, like, these people on the internet, this, these, this guy was making, I didn't watch it either, but this guy was making videos on YouTube, like killing cats and like, yeah, sick. So the, these internet sleuths, sleuth people, they were like, they all banded together and found out where this motherfucker lived and they got him arrested because like, so that was like the power of the internet and people like, you know, banding together for something good. But that's how this whole situation's dog was kidnapped, dog napped. And um, by this homeless man, they, they ended up finding out his name. They knew where he was. And I, it was just because people spread the word and people were like, uh-uh, that didn't happen in my neighborhood. But anyway, the dog was safely returned. But I was like, who the, why? Is but anyway, yeah, so there, like, there is some good to it when people actually use it to like work together for something like that. Yes, the internet. Yeah, for sure. It's it's good for it's good for sleuthing. It's sleuthing, does. stalking. Yeah, people can't you can't hide anything anymore, honestly. Oh God, no. 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 I I admittedly got mad at Tiffany for something really uh, that was like social media driven. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like it was so dumb. Like just dumb. Like so. You're like can, yeah. But you can tell a lot about stuff about somebody through that, you know? Oh, for sure. So yeah, I know it's funny how people feel like social media is so fake, but I'm like, I I think if you're good at reading people, you can tell what how people are. I, I mm -hmm. don't I don't ever get like, oh, that's not who I thought they were. It's like, no, you right. can tell that person's an asshole. Yeah, and it always surprises me when people are like oh she's such a good person and you're like you can see that like I can't see that I know I'm like you really have not been around her trust me <laughs> like delusional you're delusional well you and I have talked about people before yeah. that, that I'm like I don't I don't she doesn't come across as a good person and you're like she is not a good person <laughs> you, <laughs> you whoever, got it right yeah whoever we might even be talking about but uh, right. you no know, but yeah. Right. It's more like a, hey, I'm sure she has good qualities, but I wouldn't waste my time. Yeah. Yeah. Or cry, you know, yeah. over anything. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, but, a human behavior is it's craziness. I think that's what I want to go back to school for. I want to do something with psychology. I, th I would too. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I, I would love to do more like behavior anal analyzing kind of things and yeah. more like mental health and different types of because when I I have a PE and health degree but then I went on to do work on my master's in uh, emotional ED emotionally disabled um, at the time that's what it was called so that's what I went did my master's in and then I went and taught that for a couple of years but I love I love ED and especially like teenagers like it's so you they keep you on your it's so much fun it's so reward it's so hard but it's so rewarding yeah you know like a kid with bipolar disorder like yeah you know it's just it, it there's just so much more to life you know when you see when you have those experiences I think 
Yeah, because it makes you not be selfish. You mm -hmm. are grateful for what you have and you yeah. you understand like there's all kinds of people in the world, you know? And it, yeah, it teaches you patience and acceptance for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I loved it. I mean, I definitely, I've been out of the game for a long time, so I would not have, you know, I would not know what I'm talking about anymore. But like, yeah, I think going back to school, it'd be cool to be in psychology or something. Um, we should do that together. That's what I was just saying. I don't know. That's what I was just going to say. It's a, it's a, Let's just sign up online, I, start going to classes. I would, I would like to help people with, um, like, I think it's called a food psychologist, help people with like their emotional and eating disorders and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because not really like the, not like the crazy stuff like anorexia and bulimia, but like, I think so many people have food attachment and it just because the way the society is set up and social media and anxiety and I just, all that stuff is yeah. like so fascinating to me. And um, yeah, I just, and I just, I love reading people. I love hearing their stories, their backgrounds, what makes them, uh, mm -hmm. are. I mean, this is part of the reason why I do the interviews on the podcast. Because, like, yeah. Like you're always so, yeah. You're always so like passionate about it too. Like your energy level is always great so, yes. I'm serious. well or like you know I think with social media like there's so many different like food trends now you know like donuts yeah it's such like a hype thing and like you know then you see all these donuts stores popping up you're like damn I didn't need that but, but. cookies like everybody does the big old stuffed cookies now like mm -hmm. just be a couple of companies and now right it's like a huge it's like oh my gosh like a big cookie found yeah. Right. And you can get, you can get people to like represent your company for like next to nothing. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think social media has definitely boosted like food trends. Yeah. You know? well, and I think, but the funny thing is like my, my brother was talking to me about this too, because he's been trying to get um, more into like lifting and he, he was asking me like, He's always asked me about training because he was a big runner, but he wants to do more with building muscle. And um, I directed him to, I don't know if you know who Jeff Nippert is. Um, mm -mm. But he's a natural um, guy, bodybuilder. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube. Really, really great information. And if you're like a natural, um, a guy who's just looking to like get started, he did a lot of stuff with John Meadows too. Do a lot okay. of collaboration stuff with John Meadows on like the natural side of um, bodybuilding. And my brother ended up buying one of his programs and um, he's like, nice. I just, yeah. And he's like, I just need help with like more of the diet aspect of it. And I think that the biggest trend that I love that I've seen come up on, especially social media in the last couple of years is this whole having a healthy relationship with all food and being able to find balance whereas mm -hmm. you know people get so caught up in like like I saw this video it was so funny this guy's like you know if you have a dog and your dog is overweight you don't think oh this dog like I need to yeah. like you shouldn't be eating before 1 p.m or I need to put my dog like he needs to be eating on a diet yeah, he's like, no, you think, oh, he probably needs to have more walks and mm -hmm. probably needs to give them a little bit less food. And it's like, um, you know, you don't eliminate certain foods or you don't, you know, people don't. Right. And I think you end up having these really unhealthy. I know I did too. It's like, oh my gosh, like if I don't eat clean, then I'm eating bad, you know? And right. Once you can say like, oh, occasionally I'm going to eat a burger or if I want to eat that, I just got to make sure that my portion is smaller. Make sure I still eat some vegetables and my protein today and stuff like that. Right. And you still do your workouts and, yes. you know, yeah, I think I, you're, that is a good point. And yeah, like, I feel like that's kind of where I'm getting to as far as like having a better relationship with food. Yeah. Um, it's always going to be difficult because of what I've, you know, competing for 12 years. I mean, like you said, you chicken and chicken and rice all the time yeah. you know and yes you probably enjoy it like I do but it's like yeah. you know I don't want to ever think that I can't have something else too because that's not realistic for me not to yeah you know like, you sometimes you and you get caught in these mentalities of like well mm -hmm. no I'm gonna like I need to tighten up a little bit so I'm gonna get real strict so you know well I'm not gonna eat cake for like a couple weeks so I'll eat 
like too much cake or I'll eat like everything yeah. that I'm going to eat tonight. I can get caught up in that same sort of mentality where it's just like, right. or, or I had pizza, so I might as well eat a couple of, you know, a candy bar or, or you know, ice cream or whatever. So, right. You go, you go to the extreme of it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I feel like that is definitely something that I've worked a lot on and it made me realize like it is really the way to live because I'm not a pro athlete or competitive bodybuilder. I'm just trying to have a normal, happy, healthy life. And I right. think that's what most people want, right? Like, right. Everybody, yeah, everybody wants to be able to do that, you know, and yeah. be able to like, you know, because especially in the summer when it gets warm, if you want to go to cookouts and drink and all that stuff, it's like they should be able to do that stuff in a, you know, manageable way and not like yeah beat themselves up. That, that's what it is because I know people are like, oh, I can't go to do this event because I, I'm going to go off my diet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. Like, yeah, I know. Honestly, summer, I think, is a harder time for me to diet than winter is because there's a lot. Like, we go out for froyo or coffees, or whatever, like all the time. Right. Because I mean, like here, like we can like I can walk to Dairy Queen from here. It's like less than a mile or, you know, and I'll take the dogs and get them ice cream and stuff so yeah I mean like and then I'll get myself something but I'm like I can't do that every day no but it but it yeah. is not like there were times I think it was last summer because probably the summer after lockdown where we were like maybe two times sometimes three times a week hey you want to go get froyo let's go get froyo mm-hmm. no not only were we locked down I mean the winter times around here too you feel like almost trapped inside you know yeah yeah so we make up for it in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> I know once it starts, like this weekend was like the first like nice full, like two days in a row, nice weekend. And it was like, oh, I can, you know, walk my dog here and there and get this and get that and got to get some ice cream. It's like, you know, yes, I could get some ice cream. I don't always have to do that. And I don't always have to like have a, you know, a debate with myself on whether or not to get it. But <laughs> It's like a YOLO no. mentality every day, every day. This could be my last day. Treat yourself. Oh my God. I never thought of that, but you're, I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that to my repertoire of whether or not I should have ice cream that day. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. This could be YOLO. This YOLO. Be my last day. <laughs> it's really funny. Well, oh, you know what? You never talked about your, your TRT. Oh, well, I just do the cream right now. Yeah. So um, the last time I got my blood work done, which was like, I think November. So I'm about due. um, I, it was like my testosterone was like at an eight and my estrogen was like way up there. I was like, no wonder I cry like a bitch all the time. Um, I'm going to blame it on that. I'm just kidding. It's not really the case, but. (laughs) Yes, I've always been a. A baby. I, I will admit, I'm I'm a baby. I can be. Yes, you, I have not grown into my own yet. Are you the? You're the youngest of your siblings too, aren't you? No. Thank you for thinking. Like knowing that kind of. No, I have one little brother and two older. Oh, you have a but little. But by brother. little, he's like two years younger than I am, so he's 38. And you have two older brothers. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're so you're the only. Oh my God, my one. I've my. I just thought about this. My one brother is single now, and I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna sound really weird, but um, he's not ugly, not well, at all. We'll talk about this off camera. <laughs> Although sometimes I'm like, are you from the same parents? Cause you're like basically 10 times, like he's super dark complected. We always joke, but. Interesting, mailman, was the mailman Mexican? <laughs> You just went there. Like you just, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. No, we had a male lady. So. Oh, okay. All there's right. that. I don't, they didn't have Amazon back then. So I don't know. No, yeah. no, no Amazon here. No, no. That's really, <laughs> how, how old is your brother? 40. I think he's 47, 48. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he is. He's new. Yeah. He has a daughter. My niece, she's great. All right. Well, we'll he's a re- he's a retired air marshal. <laughs> <You're just kidding. laughs> 
<laughs> coming. My brother would be like, you're a fucking idiot. Why are you, stop it. You're like, you're so dumb. You're a big <laughs> dummy. I yeah, know. If it doesn't work out, can you and I still be friends? <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll be like, it's not him, you're it, it's me. So can we still be friends? And I'd be like, no. Still no. <laughs> well, then it's not um, worth it. I'm not going to take the plunge. <laughs> why, thank you. That, that was a test. Okay, <laughs> then. <laughs> That's a test. <laughs> Ow, my nose. So funny. Oh, my gosh. Um, so you're using a compounded cream right now? Yes. Yeah, it's... it's uh. I don't even know that I couldn't even tell you the milligrams off the top. So yeah, I, I use it every day. Is it? Is I mean, I don't know if I notice a difference right now, but yeah, I don't know. I, the only way that you would know is if I mean, you have to, like I said, you have to do it every day. You have yeah. to stick with it, and then you know, get retested or just like go off. Also, she also goes off how I feel too, which is huge. But like, I. So, and then you, you can always like, she'll, she can increase the dose and everything, which that might happen. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, start here and then you can always work your way up. You can't were, subtract. Were you noticing? Yes, absolutely. Were you noticing like, was fatigue your main thing? Yeah. Lack of motivation, um, fatigue. It, it was just like this feeling of like the, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and overly fatigued. So not like a normal, oh, it's the end of the day. I'm tired. No, this is like, I feel like I can barely move. Um, so yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was having the same where I was like, I'm not, I hate using the word motivated, but I was not motivated to train because I didn't have the, the energy for it. Right. And that's, I mean, that's a valid, valid, uh, symptom of having, having low testosterone. So yeah, I mean, it is very true. Motivation is a huge part of getting up and getting out of bed. And for some people, yeah. if they have low testosterone, like that's going to affect it. And that's, I mean, that's definitely valid. Yeah. And I, and the sleep thing too, because I, mm. I was like, if I, get oh, sleep, yeah. I could sleep for like 10 hours. If I only get seven hours of sleep, then I felt like I needed a nap in the middle of the right. day. Yeah. Like Anna would, like a lot of times I'd work and then I'm like, I'm going to take a nap until Anna comes home and then I'm going to go to the gym and then I'm going to, you know, or whatever. And she'd come mm -hmm. home and I'm just sleeping on the couch, you know, yeah. oh, this is great. <laughs> Hi. Well, yeah. And, you know, like I always say, a lot of women, they just accept that because they don't realize like there could be some underlying issue. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hugely important to get that stuff checked out. Yeah. You know, you can, you can feel better and you, sh you deserve to feel better. So I'm glad that you did do that. Do you feel like you have to, you, so would you take these hormones forever then? That's, I get that question all the time. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, that's like one thing I haven't really like looked into or thought about, but if like, I can keep it at a moderate level, yeah. um, without getting side effects, then yeah, probably. Yeah, because I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, you go through menopause, like, let's say, hypothetically, close to 50 years old, then, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's like, okay, so the second half of your life, you're supposed to live without all these hormones. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I, I mean, yeah, as you get older, things will change, you know, naturally. But then, yeah, like, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's no reason to live like that. Well, and this is why the aging process happens so much. How are you 40 now? Is it, are you 41? I'll be 41 this year. So okay. I'm 40 right now. Yeah. And it's, it, it's just, yeah. I mean, I said this on the last podcast that I did by myself talking about this, that I never thought about aging until like just into my forties. And then it was just like all the hormones were starting mm -hmm. to and you're like, Oh my gosh, like now yeah. it's aging. Now it's happening. Now it's, I thought it was never now I'm aware. <laughs> oh no, it's raining. Yeah. Ugh, I hate it's the rain on and off all day. Oh uh, yeah. See, it's been like cloudy here, but it's been warm and windy and great. It's been kind of sunny. Mm. Tomorrow is supposed oh, well. to rain all day. 
Brain. No. <sighs> the rain. Barf. I don't, and, I, and it's still, I don't like it when it's cold too, like a cold, cold rain. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's like, I just want to stay home. That's, uh, isn't that a song? Cold Probably. Rain. Uh, yeah. Uh, that I don't recognize. That was hor- That was scary. I don't know that one. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> well, um, I was going to say about uh, circling back, so we're kind of intermingling these topics, but I wanted to say um, I really was upset about Cedric's passing because Mm -hmm. he was like really amazing. But I also wanted to, it's hard not to note someone, like when you, like we talk about human behavior Mm -hmm. and when you see things that are like you just know that this is going to be somebody's path if they're um almost like bodybuilding addictive addicted you know yeah and like he had made a couple of videos talking about like uh you know he's been sick for a while and he was having trouble keeping food down and they didn't know what was going on and his mindset was well if i eat this much food and I throw up this much I'm still keeping this much down and if I continue to do that I still can step up on stage for be able to do the Arnold and to me it's just like what yeah that was probably his break I mean I that's probably why he stopped I would assume because he didn't do it so maybe he realized like this isn't the best thing yeah but it, it just it's funny how you know when you listen to somebody talk about it, it it's like what you said your whatever you surround yourself with or immerse yourself in is going to seem normal to you mm-hmm. and when when you're standing outside looking in you know like you are so caught up in this behavior and this is a train to uh possible death it's really mm-hmm. really crazy it's really great yeah yeah it's like anything i mean you just get immersed in it so you're that's your reality like that you, yeah. you really don't you know it's like growing up any like whatever however you grew up like that's all you knew yeah so yeah and you're like that reminds me of there was a <laughs> i was hearing like weird stories about people like that and somebody was like i went over to a friend's house and we got home from school and they all pulled a stick of butter out of the fridge and that was their snack and they asked me if I wanted a stick of butter. <laughs> like to them, that's normal. Actually, I had a friend that kind of did that too. She would like dip bacon in butter. Oh, so gross. <laughs> I don't know where she came up with that. That was definitely like a, oh. Do you have like certain foods that are... um like that you just can't like I think are disgusting like I uh I hate I think mayonnaise is so gross oh yeah I don't I don't do mayonnaise or ranch or sour cream like the the white sauces but yeah pudding I can't do pudding Mm, I don't mind pudding I don't like reach for it though I don't grab I don't gravitate toward it I like ranch but I do not like sour cream oh ranch I'll just send you this. I'll have to send you an SNL skit. It's funny. It's about ranch. It's dressy. All right. Sounds really good. Oh, Ready? good. All right. Okay. I'm, I, I'm done. Ta- I'm done talking to you. Yes. We're it's game over here. That's right. This is good. I will. Uh, I mean, I'll keep everybody posted on the. I, I think I, I'm just gonna look into one of those compounding creams and mm-hmm. start there. Start there. Your that's probably your safest bet. Yeah. Start with the cream. Yeah. yeah start there, and then like, uh, yeah, because you can always revisit it and increase. Like, pick some, and and you know that you're more likely to do that daily than like probably inject. You know. Yeah, or even I'm not eating. I'm not eating any hormones. I don't even know if you can do. I that's what I was doing, and I was so bad about it. Like putting the little like trochee under my tongue. Oh, it was so annoying. Waiting for it to melt. What's a trochee? That's what I don't know. That's just what they call it. It looks like a little wax tablet, and you just um, 
that's how I was using it. And I would put it underneath my tongue and let it like melt. That's how you're supposed to do it. I was like, God, this is like taking forever and it tastes really weird. So I told her that and she switched me to the cream because I was like, I don't like doing this. And I I was being inconsistent. Yeah, because I can put lotion on every day. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. That's like not a big deal. Don't let your bunny lick it off of you though. (laughs) Or you're going to have a bunny with two heads. Oh, no. Be like (laughs) super fertile. Super, yeah, fertile myrtle. She'll be like trying to hump the, the boy. <laughs> like the laundry piles. And we're like, it's our female. She humps the laundry piles. Crazy. That's awesome. I don't even know what it looks like for a I'll bunny. To- little, it's so funny. If you've ever seen bunnies um, mating, it's literally like, no. And then the little boy falls over like he been shot why would i have that's just that's bizarre why would anybody see that <laughs> well we made it the little um the boy with um, oh. anna's teacher has bunnies and we brought him over and they have a little pen outside and they made it them so cute oh my gosh oh my god can i come over for a sex play date <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> But I had never seen it before, and it's literally like three seconds, and then the boy just falls over like he's been shot. It's hilarious. Oh my god, that's <laughs> so great! Interesting. So great. Oh my word. All right, Kira. Anything, anything else you got? Oh, stick around because I gotta tell you something. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for listening and watching. It's me and Kira. Get it up. The shirt. The shirt. <laughs> we probably, I was gonna say, as long as you're down for it, I'm happy to record when even the other girls can't show up. I love to yeah. yeah. Are we still rec- uh, we are still recording. Yeah, <laughs> keep spreading away. I'm gonna say goodbye and have a great day. Remember that healthy looks different on everybody. Bye, Kira. Goodbye.